Hello, welcome to Algebra 2 Common Core. Today we're going to continue working with our percent of increase and percent of decrease by taking a look at different time periods. So in exercise number one, it says a population is growing at a constant percent rate. If the population on January 1st is 1,027 and a year later is 1,079, let's find its yearly percent growth rate to the nearest tenth of a percent. Now remember that percent just means what do I need to multiply by to get that growth rate. So to figure out the growth rate, I'm going to take my uh, year later, so 1079, and I'm going to divide by what I had to begin with, 1027, and that's going to give me what my B value is in my exponential growth equation. So going to my calculator, I see that this turns out to be 1.050633. Remember that this stands for, if it's exponential growth, my b is always equal to 1 plus r. So therefore, if 1.050633 is equal to 1 plus r, I can subtract 1 from both sides and I get that the r is equal to 0 0.050633. What percent is this to the nearest tenth of a percent? I'm going to move my decimal point over two places to the right, but then I'm going to round. So this turns out to be 5.1%. So this represents what my growth rate is for one year. Now I'm going to change the time period in exercise number two. So it says let's find the percent growth rate over a decade for the population above. Well we should all recognize that word decade as meaning 10 years. So that means that we're going to have that yearly growth rate once, once each year for 10 years. So we're going to take our B value 1.050633 and we're going to raise it to the tenth power because each time I have a new year I'm going to multiply by my growth rate. Now I'm going to put this into my calculator so I'm just going to merely do that exponent to the base and you should get 1.63874. Now again this stands for our B value and that's the B for 10 years of growth. Now if I want to figure out what my rate is, remember that this is a growth rate, so growth is going to be 1 plus r is equal to 1.63874. So when I subtract 1 from both sides, I get that r is equal to 0.63874. Now I want to round my percent growth rate again like above to the nearest tenth of a percent. So moving my decimal point over two places to the right and again rounding, this turns out to be 63.9%. So this represents our rate per decade. So we converted that over because we knew that a decade counted as 10 years. So we raised our B value to the tenth power. Now we could actually go both directions with um, growth rate. What I mean by that is that in exercise three, we're going to switch over now to monthly growth rate. So if I want to pay attention to monthly growth rate, I of course remember that a month is just equal to one twelfth of a year. So I'm going to go back to that original B value. I'm going to take my annual growth rate and I'm really just going to raise it to the 1 12th power. So remember from above that our annual was 1.050633. That's the B value per year. When I raise that to the 1 12th power, 
then that's giving me 1.004124. And again, this is the B value for monthly. To find the R, we'll just subtract 1 from that number. So R is equal to 0.004124. And as a percent, that's going to be 0.4%. And again, that's our monthly rate. So we can see that we can switch between rates in different time periods by looking at how the time period compares with our annual. Let's try exercise number four together. If a population was growing at a constant rate of 22% every five years, then what is its percent growth rate over a two-year time span? I think the last example on our last lesson was very similar to this. So I'm going to go over how we did that again in the last video. In part A it says calculate the yearly percent growth. So that means that I want to figure out that annual growth rate just like I did on the last video. If I know that over five years I've got a 22 percent growth rate then that means that my R must be equal to 0.22. So to get the B value, I'm going to say B is equal to 1 plus R, so 1.22. Now I'm going to put this into our equation like we had yesterday. My amount is equal to my original value multiplied by my B raised to the, and I want... Since it's a five-year time span, I'm going to say t divided by 5. Now to convert over to yearly, remember that we split up that exponent, and I'm going to take the fractional part of it, the 1 fifth, and move it to the inside of my parentheses, and then raise to the t power. So using my calculator, 1.22 raised to the 1 fifth, Get the decimal 1.04057 raised to the t. So what that tells me is if I look at this value right there, that's my b. b is equal to 1 plus r whenever I have a growth rate. So to get the r value, I'm going to subtract 1. So that's 0 0.04057 as a percent. That's going to be R is equal to 4.1%. So that's our annual growth rate. So look that over again and make sure that that annual growth rate makes sense to you. Well, let's go on to part B where we're going to use that expression to calculate the percent rate, the percent growth rate over two years. So when I see over two years, that tells me that I want to write an exponential expression where my exponent is going to be t over 2. That stands for every two years. So let's take our equation again. a is equal to p times going to the decimal that I just found for b, 1.04057. This is going to be raised to the t right now. So if I want to convert this, I'm going to say I need to write my exponent in a different way. So I'm going to rewrite this as 1.04057. I want to eventually get a t divided by 2 on the outside of my b value. So that tells me that I'm going to actually multiply and divide by the number 2 as an exponent. When I look at that carefully, 2 times 1 half is really just a 1. So I haven't changed the value of this expression. I'm just saying that I need to move the 1 half out with the t, so therefore I'm going to have to keep the 2 on the inside with my b. 
So this gets written as A is equal to P times 1.04057. The 2 is going to be the exponent on that base. And then the 1 half is going to be multiplied by the T on the outside. So I now have T over 2. Go to your calculator and do that exponential on the inside of your parentheses. And I see that I'm getting 1.08279 raised to the t over 2. That t over 2 again tells me that this stands for the growth rate when I've got two-year period. So this number is my b value. So if b is equal to 1.08279, Subtract 1, so r must be equal to 0 0.08279. And as a decimal, that's going to be 8.3% over a two-year time period. Now these examples tonight are pretty complicated, so don't feel bad if it's going to take a little while for you to go back over the examples and try to to get a better feel for what we're doing here. In exercise number five, we're talking about world oil reserves, and you'll notice that they're depleting at a constant rate of 2% per year. So we want to determine what the decline is going to be over 20, per, over 20 years if we know that it's got a 2% yearly decline. So if I know that the annual rate of decline is 2%, I'm going to convert that and I'm going to say the R value must be 0 0.02. But remember that when I've got decay, B is equal to 1 minus R. So that B value is going to be 1 minus 0 0.02 or 0.98. So my equation now looks like this. A is equal to, I'm not even going to care what my initial value is, I'm just going to call it P. My focus is on this B value, so 0.98 raised to the T power. Now, because we want to talk about what is going to be the decline over 20 years, just like in the last example, I want to rewrite that exponent. So I want to say that my 0.98 is going to have to be raised to the 20th and then multiplied by 1 over 20, raised to the t power. The fractional part of it stands for every 20 years, so those two will end up being multiplied together. So for my a value, go to your calculator and multiply, let's raise 0.98 to the 20th power. So when I do that on the calculator, I'm getting 0.6676 and then I'm going to raise the 1 over 20 to the t power, so I multiply those exponents, and I get raised to the t over 20. Now, hopefully you are recognizing that that b value is less than 1, so of course that means decline. So how much of a decline over the 20 years? Remember that b, when I have decline, is equal to 1 minus r. So I'm going to put the b in, 0.6676, and set it equal to 1 minus r. And I want to solve this equation for r. So I'll subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. So I'm going to get negative 0.3324 is equal to negative r. So that tells me that r must be equal to 0.3324. Convert that to a percent again, so that gives me 33.2% decline, and remember my time period was over 20 years. Now another example of when we see a percent decay or decline is when we have radioactive substances. Maybe you've seen this in either your earth science or your chemistry classes. So a radioactive substance has a half-life. A half-life is defined as the amount of time needed for half or 50% of the substance to decay. 
So if we are told that a substance has a half-life of 20 years, we want to figure out what percent of the substance would be radioactive after 40 years. So I'm going to split this problem into two parts, where I first of all calculate the annual rate of decay. So I'm going to say, okay, my B value is just going to be 0 0.50, because 50% is how much decays. Now because I know that it happens um, in 20 years, A is equal to P times 0 0.50 raised to the T over 20. So every 20 years, half of it decays. Now because I want the yearly growth rate, or in this case decay rate, I'm going to move that 1 over 20 and make it the exponent on the 0.5. So I've got 0.5 to the 1 over 20 raised to the t. Go to your calculator and raise 0.5 to the 1 over 20, and we see that we end up with 0.965936 raised to the t. So what we have done is found the annual growth rate. So the, uh, sorry, I keep saying growth, this is annual decay rate. So we're going to now take this value and change it over to a 40-year time period. So to change it over to a 40-year time period, we're going to say A is equal to P multiplied by that number that I just found for B, so 0.965936. And we're going to say, let's raise it to the 40th and 140th and then to the T. Again, remember that this exponent really multiplies out to a 1, so it's equivalent to this equation back here. Now we want the 1 over 40 to go out with the t, so let's raise our b value to the 40th power. So when I do that, it turns out to be actually a cleaner number, 0.24999. So I'm going to round that to 0.25 raised to the t over 40. So this represents my 40-year equation. Now what is the amount of material still left there? When I look at my B value here, this tells me that 25% of the substance is still radioactive after those 40 years. So our time period was 40 years. In the next part of the problem, we want to know what portion, what percent of the substance would be radioactive after only 10 years. So let's go back to that annual rate again. So A is equal to P times 0.965936. And because I now want it um, over 10 years, I'm going to say, okay, let's make my exponent on the in inside be 10, and on the outside it's going to be t over 10. So you start to get the hang of this and say, okay, on my calculator, let's do that exponent. So I get that a is equal to p multiplied by, after 10 years, 0 0.707107 raised to the t over 10. So again, I've converted the time period to 10 years instead of 40 like we did above. So what this tells me is that when I look at this base value, that tells me that 70.7% is still going to be radioactive, this time after 10 years. Now if you think about that, that actually makes sense because when we go back to the original problem it says that half of it decays in 20 years. So if we've only gone 10 years we obviously have to have way more than half of it still left. So 70.7 percent is the amount that's left. And this is all based on our exponential calculations.
Now, why don't you see if you can do part C, where you're going to go back to that annual rate, and now calculate what our percent is after only five years. Pause the video, see if you can do that calculation, and then come back and check. Take a look at my equations and my calculations where I've raised 0.965936 to the fifth power and moved the one-fifth out with the t. So that tells me that the um, substance is still going to have 84.1% still radioactive after five years. Now in exercise number seven, we're talking about a population of red-winged blackbirds in South Carolina. We've got the population represented by the function b of t is equal to 750 times 1.16 raised to the t power. Now you'll notice that t represents the number of years since the study began. So we want to convert this over to a monthly rate of growth. So going back again, we remember that monthly means that each year has 12 months. So if I know that my yearly growth rate, my B value, is equal to 1.16, I want to rewrite this. I'm just going to focus on the B for this problem and say, okay, I need 1.16, and I've got to raise it to the 1 12th, because that's going to be monthly, but I can't just raise a number to the 1 12th power with all, without also raising it to the 12th power. So I'm going to raise it also to the 12t. Now on my calculator, I did 1.16 raised to the 1 12th, and that gave me 1.0124 raised to the 12t. So again, recognizing that 12t, it means that in each year I've got 12 months. So my new b value is 1.0124. So go ahead and find that answer for my b, also recognizing that I have to have that exponent of 12t. So here is the answer that we're going to pick, choice number 2. So we've recalculated what the b is by raising it to the 1 12th power. In exercise number 8, the height of water in a tank is represented by the function h of t, which is equal to 3 times t to the 2, t over 10. I'm sorry, said that completely wrong. h of t is equal to 3 times 2 raised to the t over 10. I want to know, since it doubles every 10 seconds, can I rewrite this function in terms of the variable t and not t over 10? So all this is asking me to do is rewrite this exponential so that my exponent is a plain old t. So I've got 3 times 2, and instead of having t over 10 as my outside exponent, I'm going to move that 1 tenth in as the exponent on the 2. 
then I will have the exponent of t that I want. So I'll need to go to my graphing calculator and do 2 to the 1 tenth. So when I do that, my new, x, my new base value is 1.07177 raised to the t power. Now this problem didn't tell us specifically what we should um, reduce or uh, round our, our b value to, so I'm going to leave it just like that. If it asks for what the growth rate was, I'd have to look at that number, calculate my r value, so in this case the r value is equal to 0 0.07177, which tells me that it's a 7.2% growth rate. This one just asked me to write the function, so this is the answer that I'm going to give. Take a few minutes to go back over these examples and make sure you understand what we do when we are changing the time unit on an exponential problem. We'll take a look at some more examples tomorrow and of course answer any questions that you have. Have a great night and Congratulations for making you through for making it through that really tough um, unit this time. This was a very tricky lesson. So congratulate yourself. Give yourself a pat on the back. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.